Hello YouTube, XCT here. This video is about Unobtainium, a 40 point Linux machine on Hack the Box. For user, we download an Electron app and proxy it through Burp to find some credentials, which we can then use on an API endpoint. Combining a command injection and prototype pollution will then lead to a first shell on a container. For root, we pivot onto a development container and use a token we find there to query Kubernetes for secrets. This leads to an admin token which we can use to spawn a privileged container and then escape it by mounting the host file system. So as always we start with PodScan. Um, I'm using RustScan here because I tried it out and I kind of like it. Um, this plays ports really quickly and then runs nmap uh, individually on the discovered ports and you can tell it um, how to run that, right? Um, so I'm using version end and scripts option to run on the individual ports after discovering them. So let's look at the results here. We got SSH, uh, we got an Apache web server. Um, there's something with SSL here, we don't know yet, um, too interesting yet. Same with that part. And that one is a bit more interesting. Um, that's a port usually used for web applications, right? And we can see a, a Kubernetes um, header here. So this is probably some kind of Kubernetes endpoint server, something like that, right? If you scroll down a bit, um, in the certificate we can also see Kubernetes related stuff. So it will be something like that. Scroll down a bit more. There's some Golang server here. Not sure what that is about. Another one. And then we got a Node.js Express framework endpoint, which could be some kind of API or just a web app. We don't know yet, right? Let's continue by looking at these individually. So on this first page here, um, we can download the Debian package, which is some kind of chat application. We'll have a look at that in a second. Um, on 8.4.4.3, we have the Kubernetes endpoint, but we don't have any login yet. And on the server port here, we just get an empty JSON response, and this is the Express application. So these are the three things we can work with for now. And um, I only downloaded this, this Debian package, and we got to install it. So make a snapshot or something, I guess. And um, this needs a few dependencies, which you might not have installed. So I found that if you just Google for these exact package names, um, grab them from some FTP server and install them along the chat client, it will eventually work. And then we can start the client like that. Um, we tell it a proxy server, um, and this works because it's an Electron app, and Electron apps um, support these kinds of uh, proxy servers here on the command line, right? So now all traffic from this chat app should go through Burp. So let's explore the app a bit. Um, there's a message lock here. Here we can post some messages, and I guess they appear in the message lock then. At least it would make sense, I guess. And there's this to-do, which isn't helping too much, I guess. Let's see if we can see anything in Burp now. Have a few requests here. And actually, we can see an authentication request here, to, um, which is done with put to this path. That's pretty interesting. Uh, this is probably just getting the messages, and they're supposed to todo.txt, which is just posting the file name and then getting the contents of the file. So this might be something for an LFI RFI, and we're going to play with that a bit. So let's see if we can change that file maybe to etc passwd. Just hangs, maybe with some path traversal. But this hangs as well. I think it kind of only accepts files from the local directory. So we have to think about what file could exist there. And remember that this was a Node.js application. So there's usually an index.js file. Let's try to get that one. And we indeed get the contents here. So let's copy that over, make it a bit nicer to read. And then it looks something like that. Um, there's a strange dependency here, which is Google Cloud Storage Commands. Um, it's not something I expect to see on the box. Other than that, we can see the password again here. Um, there's a global messages array. Let's see if we can find out what this app is doing. Here we saw earlier the login request was going to. Let's see how this works. It's getting the user from our post. Then it's checking here if um, it can find the username and password combination. And then it's doing some strange merge here. It has this message object. And it's basically taking our whole message we sent and merging it to this object. This is dangerous, and we will see that in a second. Um, and then it's pushing this to this global messages array here. Other than that, there's this upload endpoint here. 
Um, there's a check here for some can upload um, attribute, which our user doesn't have. So we have to find some way around that. And if we get past that, um, we can give it a file name and it will um, use this Google Cloud stuff to upload the file. So on the one hand, we have this command injection in this Google Cloud Storage commands package, which we saw um, is used by this application. So we should be able to um, do exactly the same, which they've done here in root.upload. If you remember the file, um, we have this root.upload here as well. So that should work. But we also need to bypass this can upload check, which is a bit more tricky. Um, there's a vulnerability in Lodash, which um, allows to inject properties in the object prototype and object here, meaning the parent object where every JavaScript object that was created is inheriting from. So it tells us here that there are some functions vulnerable, one of them being merge. And if we look at the source, um, we got this merge function here. And we can trick the merge function into adding or modifying properties on the object prototype. Again, object being the, the parent thing, right? Um, these properties will be present on all objects. So we can set some attribute, some property that will be present on all objects that are created inside the application. And it tells us here how to do it. Um, we give it this um, constructor prototype and then the um, property we want to add. And if we then call merge on some object with this payload, um, every other object, here we got a new one, um, will have the set. So this is really cool because if we look back at the source, um, this message we can send it is going into this vulnerable merge method. So here we can uh, modify properties of future objects. And if we then go down to this upload here, um, it's checking that user has this can upload property. And with this vulnerability, we can set it. So let's exploit it now. The first step is adding this proto here which is basically doing exactly what I described just now, adding this can upload property to every object that will be created. So let's do that. Um, it's saying, okay, yes, yeah, so this should have worked. And now we have to post to this upload endpoint. And it's basically the same request we saw um, to this to-do endpoint. So I just um, sent that to the repeater, changed that to upload here. And then we can put our command injection here, right? So let's do wget to our box, um, grab that X file and pipe it to bin as h. And this X file is just rash.py, so a reverse shell, which will call out to our box. And we need to have a listener on whatever port we specified here, right? So let's see if that works. Um, it's telling it has uploaded it. Let's see if we got a hit here. Looks good. We got a hit on our web server and we also got a shell and even as root. Nice. So if we go to the root folder here, uh, we can grab the user flag. So that's it for the user part. So let's explore the environment a bit. If we just do set here, we can see some interesting environment variables. Uh, we can see that we are in a Kubernetes environment and we are on this web app deployment container. And here we can see this web app. This is the um, node endpoint we just played with. And um, if you go a little bit around where secrets in Kubernetes are located, you will see that in run secrets, there's this Kubernetes folder. And here we got um, the service account folder, which has a token. And this token will allow us to do stuff in the context of the service account user. So. Let's save it. Now, the question is really how we can use this token. Basically, what I did is I used um, a program called Lens, which is um, a graphical tool to interact with Kubernetes. But um, in order to use that, you will need to create a config file first, which is in cube config. And I created that one like that. So let's copy the token here. And basically, we give it the endpoint, which is the Kubernetes server. Um, let's see if this is the real IP. Actually, I have to change it because I did the box earlier. And other than that, um, we don't want to verify SSL because that would fail. We tell it the username and we give it the token. And if you have that config set, you can use lens. 
And if you open up lens, it looks like that. And because we have this config file, we have this context we defined now here at the bottom, and we should be able to connect to the server. And this authentication has worked despite showing some errors here because